there's one thing I can definitely say about watching this is that I had a less than blissful experience. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about a brand new Amazon Prime release, Bliss. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts on this movie were. If you already saw it, if you were excited for it, if you weren't planning on seeing it, let me know so we can discuss. Also make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these reviews as it helps me out immensely by getting my channel out there and growing the community. And if you are new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with reviews of new releases, older films, hidden gems, and so much more on a near daily basis. But let's not waste any more time and let's talk about Bliss. This is a mind-bending love story following Greg, played by Owen Wilson, who, after recently being divorced and then fired, meets the mysterious Isabel, played by Salma Hayek, a woman living on the streets and convinced that the polluted, broken world around them is just a computer simulation. Doubtful at first, Greg eventually discovers there may be some truth to Isabel's wild conspiracy. This is written and directed by Mike Cahill, and this is his third feature film, and it's kind of fitting that this just got released around the same time as the documentary A Glitch in the Matrix, which is also about the possibility of living in a computer simulation. I guess that's the new thing to talk about right now. And yeah, you're definitely going to get some Matrix vibes when watching this, as it talks about things like needing crystals to go between worlds, like the red pill, blue pill stuff from the Matrix, and there will be moments where reality and fantasy start to blend together, though this is a lot less action oriented and is meant to be more of a character study. The film is supposed to be a metaphor for things like mental illness and drug addiction. When we first meet Greg, he's sitting in his office, not really focused on his work. He spends most of his time drawing this world that he keeps thinking about, including a woman resembling Selma Hayek, and he gets called into his boss's office, though he keeps delaying walking in there as we get this long sequence of him on the phone trying to get a refill on his medication. Though the film never really quite delivers on having anything meaningful to say on topics like addiction and mental illness, at least for the majority of the film. The first hour of this, maybe even a little more of that, is filled with nothing but rules, exposition, and backstory. After a scene at the beginning where Greg ultimately gets fired, causing him to accidentally kill his boss in a fit of rage, he soon meets Isabel, who then shows him he has these powers in this supposed simulation, because they're both the only ones who are quote unquote real. And we then get scene after scene of Isabel and Greg walking through various locations, playfully using their powers where they can manipulate people by pointing at them, and she gives him the rundown on this world. And it's not until about 15 minutes in where we get to see this other world that's supposedly the reality. The distinction between the world we spend the first half of the movie and the second half of the movie is the color palette. For the first 50 minutes, the color palette is desaturated, so it gives off a cold, dreary, emotionally distant feel that's meant to reflect the hopelessness and despair felt by Greg as he struggles to get his life together, or at least the life he has in the supposed simulation. And when things switch to the other world, it's bright, cheery, and it looks polished, and all the characters here are welcoming and almost always smiling, and technology is so advanced there that it's the typical representation of what one would imagine when they think of a utopia, the main thing being how people can be present at events through holograms. But even as we dive more into this world, world, we're never quite sure what the point of this entire movie is right away, and we're already over the hour mark by the time we get settled in. The film gets so caught up in its rules and its world building that it never bothers to generate any real conflict for much of its runtime. Besides the initial encounter with Isabel, the film coasts through its first hour or so, basically telling us, at most, this world exists. Even when it comes to the concept of having powers in the simulation, the most we get is that Greg and Isabel go roller skating and they throw people off balance there using their powers. Hilarious. And we do get a subplot where Greg's daughter Emily, played by Nesta Cooper, begins looking for him, and we see her briefly for one scene after Greg disappears with Isabel, but she then herself disappears, or should I say, she's pushed off to the side, and the film itself never builds any momentum until Greg thinks he sees her about three quarters of the way through. And the film then starts posing questions as to what's supposed to be real and what's not. Is the simulation world actually the reality? Is the perfect world the reality? Is there even really a simulation? Are Greg and Isabel just imagining this perfect world? because of their addiction and mental health issues, it's never quite clear, and the film definitely needed some more time to explore some of these concepts as it never quite digs into this stuff until towards the very end. Like there's one point where Greg enters the quote unquote real world and he's having difficulties remembering his supposed life there, and he asks Isabel how come he's not remembering anything about this and she simply says, don't worry about it, 
which I feel is a metaphor regarding how we're supposed to feel when watching this entire movie. Just go with the flow and don't ask too many questions, despite the fact that it needed well over an hour to give us all this backstory. The only really half-developed idea comes later in the movie, when a notion is presented that people can only appreciate the good things in life if they have also experienced suffering, which isn't a bad thing to explore. I just wish that it didn't take until so late into the film to present that idea, and even then, it's not fully thought through. But when we do get to that last half hour or so, the film actually does get a little bit better, as it's the first time it feels like there are actual stakes to the story. But by then, it's too little too late, as it should have been introduced around the half hour mark, or maybe even the 45 minute mark at the latest. It was a second act plot point that we got in the third act, which gets resolved almost as quickly as it's introduced. And it ultimately leaves a lot of the themes and ideas it brought up as only half answered or not even answered at all. And I felt like I barely learned much about any of these characters. Given the amount of problems we hear Greg has within the first few minutes of the movie, we come to find out that, at best, maybe like only two of those are explored with any sort of depth after those first few minutes, and his function mostly serves as an audience surrogate, constantly asking Isabel questions and nothing more, coming at the expense of his own character development. Meanwhile, Isabel is mostly portrayed as some sort of raving lunatic for the majority of the film. She'll jump from one point to the next in a way that feels disjointed, she'll start talking about things as if Greg's already supposed to know them, and say them in a way that they'll come off like non sequiturs. And since most of her function serves as having to give us all this backstory, we don't get to really know much about her either, other than, very briefly, what role she serves in this quote-unquote real world. And while the performances by Owen Wilson and Selma Hayek were okay for what they are, with Wilson sticking to his usual laid-back routine while Hayek is a little more over the top, I didn't find myself really caring about anything that happens to these characters. This brings up a lot of ideas and it has a lot of rules and all this backstory, but it never fully develops any of them. It tries to be this mix of a mental illness and drug addiction metaphor as well as this Matrix style sci-fi epic, though both ideas don't fully blend together and are at best half-baked. It cruises through over an hour of its 100 minute runtime, throwing all these ideas and concepts at us though never giving us a sense of what the actual stakes are or having any real point until the last 20 to 30 minutes when it's too little too late. It has some cool ideas but doesn't do much with any of them leading to a squandered opportunity. Bliss gets a 4 out of 10. So let me know, did you see Bliss or are you planning to see it and what were your thoughts? Did you like the concept? Do you have a favorite sci-fi movie? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. And for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll catch you next time.